I think there's a very big opportunity in the public sector to really look at those trends and to think of embracing an ethical publishing sort of model. I'm sure quite a few of you are familiar with the Edwin Trust Barometer, fantastic research the last 14 years or so. The latest Australian research actually shows a bit of a bu relative bump up in terms of trust towards government relative to other Western economies. But the long-term trend, the last, say, five years, especially since the GFC, the long-term trend is away from consumers' trust of official figures, both in the corporate sector and the government sector. We no longer trust the people at the top of the pyramid because that's not authentic. That's not transparent. We know that they've got people controlling that message. The people we really trust... The, the huge growth here, you see the, like, the fourth and fifth ones down, it's regular employees. It's people like me. Think about when you, let's go back to the, the booking a hotel example. You would trust the recommendation of someone you've never met, some anonymous reviewer for a hotel, before you would actually trust the hotel about the, what the property is like itself. This social layer has totally changed the way we think about what sources and, and referral points we, we talk to. But fundamentally, there's very little trust. There's a high, let's, I'll put it this way, there's a high level of distrust inherent in the marketplace for both large corporations and for government. <laughs> there's also very specific challenges which are totally shaping the delivery model in the public sector. You know, it's big global trends which are having as much impact in Australia as any other market. Obviously, climate change doesn't exist in Australia, but in other markets, it's a very big issue. <laughs> so you've got this, this traditional setup of resources and demands having some form of balance over the last, say, 20, 30, 40 years. But these things are really shifting that and pushing both the tightening of the belt the fundamental revision of budgets ever downward, at the same time as these pressures and the ecosystem changing dramatically, people's expectations have changed so dramatically around what they want people to deliver. We've got giant bilbies <laughs> protesting. We've got people making an untold number of internet memes about any time there's a perceived gaffe or, or incident going on the marketplace. And who knows, as this trends, as these technology, as these layers keep changing, who knows what the next uh, complexities to this whole environment are going to bring. Let me talk about a few opportunities. So again, another thing from the Edelman barometer is this focus around, if we just pull out the buckets of that uh, focus on people like us and regular employees. A huge challenge for many organisations is delivering services with efficiency. The public craves, believes, trusts regular employees to talk to customer service or to business-related issues much more than they do about leadership. Think about what influence that can have in the way you package up knowledge, in the way you um, use those internal champions of knowledge in your external communications, in those content assets that can actually proactively help educate people and put a public human face to the organisation. The ageing economy, huge challenges. Who knows, uh, how, who knows what impact can be had from content models that can help, to, uh, help for people to embrace leaving healthier w lifestyles earlier. We've just this week launched a product with NRMA called Liv Living Well Navigator. NRMA, obviously, they've got a specific set of products that they would like to sell into this marketplace. However, Living Well Navigator is a commitment to an audience around the topics that are relevant to them. The vast majority of those topics are not going to be speaking to buying breakdown insurance services for your car. But you build, you, by building a, a content model that 
is something actually that helps people solve their problems, that helps educate people, that helps people live the sort of lives they want to be living, that earns you the right to subsequently have a more product-specific discussion with them. NRMA, thinking about that same model, they also target different audience demographics with different types of products. So Lift4 is another product, another audience platform, if you like. Again, similar set of products and services, but just putting a more audience-specific layer on top of that, creating content that this particular audience is interested in to earn the right to have, at a subsequent point, turn that positive brand association into something that may be a business benefit. Think about some of the other huge challenges that we're facing now we're going to keep facing. What could a content model look like to help discuss literacy challenges, to help solve youth unemployment? 